video lectures and today uh, we're covering tissue. This is part two of the chapter tissue, the living fabric. And I will link the uh, I will link the first part below this recording. Um, so because this is a second part, we already covered introduction to human tissue and all epithelial tissue. So I will scroll down to the connective tissue. This is where we're gonna start today. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. It takes a minute for some reason for my PowerPoint to show up. Okay. Connective tissue is the most abandoned and widely distributed tissue type. It's divided into three classes, connective tissue proper, fluid connective tissue, and supporting connective tissue. Now on this diagram, you can see that connective tissue, all, all of it, all types of connective tissue have common embryonic origin, and it's a mesenchyme. So mesenchyme is embryonic tissue that give rise to all type of connective tissues. Then it can be divided into three groups, connective tissue proper, fluid connective tissue, and supporting connective tissue. And you divide these larger groups into smaller subgroups. Um, connective tissue proper, you can divide into loose, Fibers create loose, open framework or dense. Fibers densely packed. Fluid connective tissue divided into blood contained in cardiovascular system and lymph contained in lymphatic system. Supporting connective tissue is divided into two groups as well. Cartilage, solid, rubbery, matrix, and bone solid crystalline matrix. And then each of these groups will be divided further. So like loose connective tissue, we will divide into three smaller groups, dense into three smaller groups, uh, cartilage and bone. And this is what you will see on our next slide. So over here, you can see that um, connective tissue proper, Further is divided uh, into loose and dense. We already covered it. And loose connective tissue includes areolar, adipose, and reticulum. Dense connective tissue includes dense regular, dense irregular, and dense elastic. Now, cartilage, we have three types of cartilage. Highland cartilage, the most abandoned, elastic cartilage and fiber cartilage. We have two types of bone. So bone is supporting connective tissue, the same as cartilage, supporting connective tissue. We have compact bone and spongy bone. And you're giving example of fluid connective tissue blood. Blood cells formation and differentiation are quite complex and it will be discussed in our future lectures. Major function of connective tissue include binding and support, protection, insulation, and transportation, because one of the connective tissue, one of the example of connective tissue is blood, and you know, function of blood is to transport nutrients and oxygen and waste product uh, to your cells and from your cells to your excretory organs. Characteristic of connective tissue. Connective tissue have mesenchyme as their common tissue origin, varying degrees of vascularity. Most of the connective tissue is highly vascular. The uh, Cartilage is avascular and connect, uh, dense connective tissue proper is slightly vascular. Cells separated by non-living extracellular matrix 
So cells of the connective tissue do not have cellular junctions. They are not connected. There is a large amount of extracellular material between cells. So if, for example, you have a cell, you have another cell, and you have space between them that we call extracellular matrix. And matrix is co composed of ground substance and fibers. Now, ground substance is the medium through which solutes diffuse between blood capillaries and cells. Uh, components of ground substance include interstitial fluid, adhesion proteins, um, proteoglycans that are organic molecules that are made of protein core and large polysaccharides um, such as uh, chondroitin sulfate and hyaluronic acid, trap water and vary in various amounts, uh, affecting the viscosity of the ground substance. Um, so again, just to remind you that matrix, and this is extracellular material between cells of the connective tissue is made of ground substance and fibers. And those ground substance that, um, that we have, have different components, like fluid, adhesion protein, proteoglycans, and of course, um, watery comp component. Matrix also made of fibers. Three types of fibers exist, collagen or white fibers, strongest and most abandoned type, provides high tensile strengths, that's collagen fibers, Elastic fibers, network of long, thin, elastin fibers that allow for stretch, and reticular fibers are short, fine, highly branched collagenous fibers. And of course, as any tissue, connective tissue is made of cells. Cells are mitotically active and secretory cells called blast cells, like chondroblast, fibroblast. Mitotically active means they divide and they secretory means they secrete. So they divide and secrete. So those cells have blast uh, in their name, like over here. And mature cells we call sites. Now fibroblast in connective tissue proper chondroblast and chondrocytes in cartilage, osteoblast and osteocytes in bone, hematopoietic cells in bone marrow, fat cells that we call adipocytes, white blood cells, mast cells, and macrophages. So you can see the um, high variety of different cells exist uh, that make up connective tissues. Uh, on this diagram, you see um, representation of connective tissue proper, and this one is loose. Um, um, so this is uh, areola connective tissue uh, actually shown to us over here. So we have cell fibroblast, mitotically active, and fibroblast also secretes all these fibers. And notice that fibers are not inside the cells, they are in the matrix. So those uh, collagen fibers, the strongest and the thickest, then those are elastic fibers and reticular fibers are this one, the short and highly branching fibers. And what's shown here in blue, this is ground substance. And other cells will include macrophage, fat cells or adipocytes, mast cells, neutrophils that is type of white blood cells. So you can see that connective tissue is made of cells. So here are cell, cell lymphocyte, also white blood cells. So here we have different cells and we have space between the cells. And this space, of course, is not empty space. It filled with extracellular matrix that is made of ground substance and fibers. And three major type of fibers are collagen, elastic, 
and reticula. And you can see also capillaries, that means this tissue is vascular. Okay, we're gonna start with connective tissue, embryonic mesenchyme. It gives rise to all other connective tissue, gel-like ground substance with fibers and star-shaped mesenchymal cells. And you can see a uh, histology slide um, over here. You see the star-shaped cells and fibers and ground substance that made extracellular matrix between the cells. Connective tissue proper includes loose connective tissue and dense connective tissue. Um, example of loose connective tissue are areolar, adipose, and reticula. Examples of dense connective tissue, dense regular, dense irregular, and elastic. And loose means the fibers in the matrix are loosely arranged, and dense means that fibers in the matrix are densely packed. So first is our connective tissue proper, loose connective tissue and its areola. Gel-like matrix with all three fiber types, um, collagen, elastic, and uh, reticular. Cells, fibroblast, macrophages, mast cells, and some white blood cells. Function, it wraps and cushioning organs. Its macrophages phagocytize bacteria plays important role in inflammation, holds and conveys tissue fluid. Location, widely distributed under epithelia of body, forms lamina propria of mucous membrane, packages organs, surrounds capillaries. Now, uh, we will have um, a lecture on structure of the skin, and you will learn that skin is made of epidermis and dermis. Epidermis is top layer. It's made of epithelial tissue, but right underneath epidermis, you actually have areola connective tissue. That is part of the papillary layer of dermis. So pretty much where would you find this areola tissue? Not only it, um, it, you find it in your uh, mucous membrane, and mucous membrane is in your respiratory digestive tract, right? It's uh, around your organs, around your capillaries, but it's, you also find it just underneath of epidermis of your skin. So it covers your body from top to bottom. So very widely distributed tissue, areola connective tissue. Connective tissue proper, and again, it's loose connective tissue, adipose. Matrix is a matrix as in areolar, but very sparse. Closely packed adipocytes or flat cells have nucleus pushed to the side by large fat droplet. Functions, provides reserve food fluid, insulates against heat loss, supports and protects organs. Location under skin in the hypodermis, that's below your skin, around kidneys and eyeballs, within abdomen, in breast. Now you can see histology photomicrographs here, and I recorded uh, separate videos where I go over histology slide and I show um, students where cells are, where nuclei, where matrix. So please refer to those videos if you uh, want to learn more about histology slides. And I will again leave description. In, in the description for this video, I will leave a link to my videos that cover histology slides specifically. Connective tissue proper, again, loose connective tissue, reticula. Description, network of reticular fibers, in a typical loose ground substance, reticular cells lie on the network. Functions, fibers form a soft internal skeleton or stroma that supports other cell types, including white blood cells, mast cells, and macrophages. Location, lymphoid organs, lymph nodes, bone marrow, and spleen. And actually reticular connective tissue is a framework for lymphatic tissue. 
in a lymphatic system, when we cover lymphatic system, you will learn about organs of lymphatic system and you will hear that they're made of lymphatic tissue. But what is that lymphatic tissue? It's actually a reticular tissue. Now we in the connective tissue proper dense. It's a dense connective tissue. We will have fibers mostly in this one, dense regular, we have mostly collagen fibers and they are densely packed and they are arranged in a regular pattern. So description, primary irregularly arranged collagen fibers, some elastic fibers, and major cell types is the fibroblast. Function, able to withstand tension exerted in many directions, provide structural strengths. Location, fibrous capsule of organs and of joints, dermis of the skin, submucosa of digestive tract. So again, uh, we already said in dermis, you have areola connective tissue, but that's a superficial layer of dermis. And deep layer of dermis is made of dense irregular connective tissue. Another dense, so that's dense irregular. Another dense uh, connective tissue is elastic. It's a dense regular connective tissue contains high proportion of elastic fibers. Dense regular, if you look at the diagram here or for the micrograph, you will see those black lines, elastic fibers, and they all parallel to each other. Compared to a previous one, when we have irregularly arranged collagen fibers, here we have regularly arranged elastic fibers. Function, allows a recoil of tissue following stretching, maintains pulsatile flow of blood through arteries. So you will find it in the, uh, this tissue in, in the walls of arteries, especially in elastic arteries. Aids passive recoil of lungs following inspiration. Location, walls of large arteries within certain ligaments associated with the vertebral column and within the walls of the bronchial tubes. And on that diagram here, you see aorta, that is the largest artery in your body. It's elastic artery. So you'll find large amount of elastic fibers within the walls of the aorta. <clears throat> now, where's my dense regular? Did I miss it somehow? Okay, so this one is dense regular. Yeah, I missed this one. So it's kind of dense regular. You can see that primary um, fibers are collagen fibers and they parallel to each other. We have few elastic fibers and major cells are fibroblast. Function, attaches muscles to bones or to muscles, attaches bones to bones, withstands great tensile stress, when pulling force is applied in one direction. Location, tendons, most ligaments, and aponeurosis. And aponeurosis are similar to uh, tendons, just uh, tendons are rope-like and aponeurosis are sheet-like. So you can see uh, ligaments uh, and tendon here shown in the shoulder joint. Those organs are made uh, predominantly from dense irregular, oh, I'm sorry, dense regular connective tissue. So I want to go back for a minute just to sum up over here. So we cover six types of tissues and you will find them right here. It's a connective tissue proper. If fibers are loose, then it's areolar, adipose, or reticular. If fibers are dense, that is dense regular, fibers are parallel to each other, dense irregular, Fibers are not parallel. They arrange in the different directions. And elastic is a dense regular. But the difference is in elastic tissue, you predominantly have elastic fibers. In dense regular, you predominantly have collagen fibers. OK. So next uh, type of connective tissue, cartilage. 
three types of cartilage, hyaline cartilage, the most common type of the cartilage in the body, elastic cartilage, and fiber cartilage. Uh, hyaline cartilage, amorphous but firm matrix, collagen fibers form an interceptable network, chondroblast produce the matrix, and when mature, lie in lacunae. Um, when chondroblasts are mature, we call them chondrocytes. And lacunae are a little pockets of fluid. So over here, that's a pocket of fluid called lacuna. And inside this lacuna, you will find chondrocytes. Now, con uh, because this matrix is pretty firm, you need fluid um, that would surround a cell. So animal cells and human cells are animal cells. They can only survive if they are surrounded by fluid. So in cartilage and the bone, when the matrix is firm, you will find cells inside pockets of fluid that go like human. Function, supports and reinforces, has a resilient cushioning properties and resist compressive stress. Location, forms most of the embryonic skeleton, covers the ends of long bones in joint cavities, forms costal cartilage of the ribs, cartilages of your nose, trachea, and larynx. Elastic cartilage. Similar to hyaline cartilage, but more elastic fibers in matrix. Function, maintains the shape of a structure while allowing great flexibility. And um, elastic cartilage is not that common. You will find it in two locations. It's your internal ear or pina and epiglottis. And epiglottis is a cartilage that covers your voice box and prevent your food, when you swallow your food, it prevents it from going into your trachea um, by closing that larynx. A larynx is the opening to the trachea. I mean, the, you have larynx and inferior to larynx, you have trachea. So, and you have epiglottis that covers the larynx and prevent food from following a wrong pipe, as we say. Uh, fiber cartilage, matrix similar to, but less firm than that in hyaline cartilage. Thick collagen fibers predominant. Function, tensile strengths with the ability to absorb compressive shock. Location, intervertebral discs, uh, disc between vertebra, pubic symphysis. Um, this is a cartilage between your two hip bones, disc of a knee joint. Clinical uh, homeostatic imbalance. Cartilage is actually a vascular tissue. That means you don't have capillaries in cartilage. A vascular cartilage loses ability to divide as we age, so injuries heal slowly common in people with sport injuries. Later in life, cartilage can calcify or ossify, became bony, causing chondrocytes to die. And because it's a vascular, it takes long time to heal or sometimes cartilage does not heal at all. Another supporting connective tissue is bone. And uh, another name for bone is osseous tissue. Description, hard calcified matrix containing many collagen fibers. Cells are osteocytes, lie in lacunae, very well vascularized. Function, bone supports and protects by enclosing, provides levers for the muscles to act on, stores calcium and other minerals and fat. Marrow inside bones is a site for bone cell formation and process of blood, uh, blood, I'm sorry, not bone, blood cell formation. Formation of blood cells is called hematopoiesis and location your bones. Next connective tissue, this is fluid connective tissue, blood. Red and white blood cells in a fluid matrix 
In this situation, we call matrix plasma. Function, transport of respiratory gases, nutrients, waste, and other substances. Location contained within blood vessels. Okay, so um, I go back for a second again because we covered connective tissue. We didn't talk about lymph, uh, but most of the rest of the tissue we covered. So if I go back here, right, so that's the tissue that we covered, connective tissue proper, areola, adipose, reticula, dense regular, dense irregular, dense elastic, that connective tissue proper. Supporting connective tissue, we covered cartilage and bone. And fluid connective tissue, we covered blood. Next tissue type is uh, nervous tissue. Uh, we will just briefly use, uh, describe nervous tissue, use just uh, one example. Um, okay, so description. The cells of nervous tissue, the major cells, are called neurons. They are branching cells. Their cell processes that may be quite long extend from the nucleus containing cell body. Also contributing to nervous tissue are non-irritable supporting cells that are not illustrated on this diagram. Are not illustrated, but you can see them in the, uh, on the histology slide. So, um, so here's our neurons right here with the long processes, uh, processes called uh, dendrites and axons. Um, then you have um, the smaller dots. Those are supporting cells that are called neuroglia or glial cells. And it seems like you have a lot of space between cells, but it's not true. Uh, we have very small amount of extracellular matrix. All of these spaces are occupied by neuronal processes. And because neuronal processes are part of cells, that means you have cells pretty much close to each other. And because those dendrites, they're still part of the cells and axons. So here you can see cell body. You have dendrites, many dendrites, highly branched processes. And human neurons have one axon um, per cell. Function, transmit electrical signals from sensory receptors and uh, to effectors, uh, your muscles and glands. And your effectors control, uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, and neurons control activity of your effectors. So you use your nervous tissue to control your muscles and glands, and you use your nervous tissue to send sensor information to your brain. Location, brain, spinal cord, and nerves. And the last type of um, tissue is nerve, uh, muscle. So we have epithelial tissue, connective tissue, nervous tissue, and muscle tissue. Um, and muscle tissue is, is divided into three groups, skeletal muscles, skeletal muscle tissue, sorry, uh, smooth muscle tissue, and cardiac muscle tissue. Skeletal muscles, description, long cylindrical multinucleated cells with obvious striation. Multinucleated means we have several nuclei, so you can see here those uh, purple parts for, on, on this picture. Those are nuclei, and striation are these lines um, inside a cell. Function, voluntary movement, locomotion, manipulation of the environment, facial expression, and voluntary control. So you control your skeletal muscle. Location, you find muscle, skeletal muscle tissue in skeletal muscles attached to bones or occasionally to skin. And of course, we will have um, another lecture on skeletal muscles and what muscles attach to your bones, what muscles attach to your skin. It's all coming up. Cardiac muscles, branching, striated, generally uninucleate cells that inter interdigitate. 
that special at specialized junctions that called intercalating disk. Um, so, so you can see one cell over here is a single nucleus shown here in purple. You have striation. And interdictate means they communicate with each other at this point where you have this dark alliance called intercalating disk. Functions. As it contracts, it propels blood into the circulation. And this muscle tissue is under involuntary control. Allocation, the walls of the heart. So that's the only place where you find cardiac muscles in the walls of your heart. Smooth muscle, spindle-shaped cells with central nuclei, no striation, cells arranged closely to form sheets. Function, propel substances or objects, foodstuffs, urine, baby, I guess baby considered to be an object here, the same as foodstuffs, or uh, maybe foodstuffs are substances a long internal passage base, involuntary control, location, mostly in the walls of hollow organs. And um, hollow organs are organs that have space inside, like your stomach, your large, your small intestine, like your urinary bladder or uterus of a female. And the last part of this PowerPoint um, covers memory. Um, membranes, we have four major types of membranes. Three of them are made of epithelial and connective tissue. And one uh, that is, um, I don't know if it, it show over here or not. Um, no, it's, uh, and one membrane, um, your um, synovial membrane is made of connective tissue only. So, Epithelial membrane means they're made of epithelial, but they're also made of connective tissue. And because membranes made of two tissue types, they consider to be organs. So they're simple organs. Uh, the first is cutaneous membrane, or your skin covers the body surface. Mucous membrane, or mucosa, Line body cavities open to the exterior. It covers your digestive tract, your respiratory tract, your urogenital tract. Those are all bodies, uh, uh, I'm sorry, those are all cavities that open to exterior. And serous membrane, we already mentioned serous membrane in the previous lectures. Another name is serosa. It's a mesothelium and areola tissue in the closed ventral body cavity. Um, serous membrane is double layered. We have parietal serosa that lines internal body walls and visceral serosa covers internal organs. And um, because we have serosa that covers your ventral body cavity, such as uh, cavity where your lungs located, where your heart located, where your digestive system located, we give serosa different names. It's a pleura, um, if it's cover your pleural cavity and lungs, parietal and visceral pleura. Visceral means, viscera is a common name for organs in the ventral body cavity. So visceral pleura cover your lungs and parietal pleura covers the cavity where your lungs are located. Pericardium, visceral and parietal, and peritoneum, visceral peritoneum and parietal peritoneum. Development aspect. So we all start as a one single cell that is formed when sperm fertilize ovum. And when cells divide and we have enough amount of cells, we start forming the primary tissue. We call them primary germ layers. So primary tissue includes ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Formed early in embryonic development, specialized to form the four primary tissues, epithelial, connective, nervous and uh, epithelial, connective, nervous and muscle. 
uh, nerve epithelial tissue arise from ectoderm, muscles and connective tissue arise from mesoderm, and the tube forming the digestive tract originate from endoderm. And here we have a uh, last slide. In this PowerPoint, you can see 16 day old embryo uh, with a dorsal surface view, and three uh, primary tissue are shown in three different colors, uh, blue, red, and yellow. So blue is ectoderm, mesoderm is red, and endoderm is yellow. And you can see that epithelium is formed of all three layers, uh, nervous tissue from ectoderm, muscles, and connective tissue, mostly from mesoderm. And um, endoderm, so let's start with ectoderm, um, right? So here, ectoderm shown uh, in a blue form your uh, nervous tissue, neuron of the brain, uh, skin cells of epidermis, and your pigment cells. Then if you move to mesoderm in the middle, so your muscles and most of the connective tissue from mesoderm, so you can see muscles, cardiac muscles, skeletal muscles, smooth muscles, all formed from middle layer. And then red blood cells, that is your, uh, of course, connective tissue formed from mesoderm. Um, and because mesoderm form epithelium as well, all three layers form epithelium, where you will find this epithelium, well, tubular cells of your kidney, that's uh, epithelial tissue formed from mesoderm. And endoderm, uh, it's formed a lining of the digestive tract. Um, it formed digestive cells, pancreatic cells, your thyroid cells, lung cells, um, alveolar cells. Right, so um, that's our endoderm. Okay, so that was the last slide. Um, uh, again, I want to remind you that this is the second video lecture. If you want to cover the beginning of this PowerPoint and beginning of this chapter, you need to watch the first uh, video lecture. And thank you for doing it. Thank you for watching. And I hope it was helpful.